Good morning and Merry Christmas. Welcome to this Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church uh, Christmas Sunday. Friday was the day that we enjoyed the birth of our Lord, and this is a Sunday where we can come together online to worship the Lord and also give us a little bit of encouragement as we come into the end of the year. So let's come together now for worship, starting with a call of worship, a call and response call of worship. Please join me. People of God, hear, Christ is born. Hallelujah. God, God is, is with, with us. us. The, the Lord dwells, dwells among us. us. God has guided us through the months and will guide us into the new year. Give glory to the God of eternity. We, we praise, praise the Lord, Lord full, full of majesty, majesty mercy, mercy, love, and wonder. wonder. Glory be to the King, Christ our Savior. Glory be to God who keeps his promises and fills us with surprises. Hallelujah. This is a time of celebration. We are in the season of Christmas, and so we should praise the Lord, adore the Lord. So please join me in this prayer of adoration. Let us pray. O true Christmas King, O newborn of Mary, Son of God, Christ our Savior, we thank you, we praise you, we adore you for being born, born for us, you who lived for us, taught us, died for us, and rose for us, and will return for us. O Lord, we praise you because you are a God of love, a God who will not allow death to stop us, to not stop you. You, O Lord, would reach beyond it to save us and to place us before you. So, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit come now, this hour and this week, filling our hearts with praise and glory and adoration for your name, for your wonder, for your birth, for your life. May our songs, may our contemplation, may our prayers, and may our fellowship in any form be pleasing to you and glorify your name, that others may know it. So please, Lord, may we worship you now in great hallelujahs. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. amen. And so, we say hallelujah, we pray hallelujah, but let's also sing. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing glory to God. Let us sing. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor Marcus mentioned, we just celebrated Christmas. And while we celebrate the birth of a baby Jesus, we remember through our worship today snapshots that he did not remain as a baby, but he became our sacrificial lamb, and he became the victor, the lion that overcame death. And for us today, he is still our miracle working uh, worker working through our day to day. Let's declare our praise to the King of all kings. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Jesus, for our sake, 
you die Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit Three in one God of glory Majesty Praise for stone was built for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not fade. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory. forever to the King of Kings. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart And now, with the worship of songs, warming our hearts, giving us that feeling of worship, let's also open our minds. Let us sharpen them on the ways of God, on the commandments, on the creeds, 
on the catechisms, on the confessions. Here in Emmanuel, we have the learning of our faith, where we learn more, even just a little bit, of what God asks of us, what the church tradition is. And so here from a catechism, we have a question about the Eighth Commandment. Hear the question and please respond. What is God's will for us in the Eighth Commandment? That we, that we do, do not take without permission that which belongs to someone else, nor withhold any good from someone who might benefit. Now hear this about Jesus from Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Hear this, what he says about possessions. Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come, follow me. The Lord is gracious and has given us more than we need. And we fall into great despair and great sin when we take more than we need instead of giving life to others as the Lord gave his life for us. So let's know that Christ was born for us. He was born to die, but also rise again. He was born that all life may be reborn in resurrection. So we know that we can come to Christ, asking him to forgive us and put that new life in us and ask him to put it in the world and all that we know. So please join me in a prayer of confession and intercession. This is a call and response prayer of confession and intercession. Let us pray. Christ, born to us, died for us, rose for us. You are a gift we are not worthy of. Yet, Yet your, your love is freely, freely given, given. And we, and we seek, seek to experience that love. love. Forgive, Forgive us our, our sins. sins. Bind, Bind us to your love. love. Inspire us. Breathe into us. May we have the Holy Spirit dwell in us and share God's grace with others. The world, the world is in need of your grace, O oh God. God. Sin slithers around. around. Use, Use us, us to plant, to plant goodness, goodness to keep, keep it at bay. bay. May the coming year be the year of the poor are lifted, that the hungry fed, the sick heal, the blind made seeing. May, May the lonely, lonely outcast, outcast loveless, loveless, and lost, lost be found, found by you and at your table. God, God of wonder, hear our prayers. And now let's take a time of silent prayer, asking the Lord forgive us and do wonders in this world in the coming year. A time of silent prayer. And now, as a people united in Christ, let's come together to recite that prayer that he taught us to say. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our debts, debts as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And hear these words, these words of grace from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 49 to 53. Hear these words and please respond. Who is he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength in his arm. He has, he has scattered, scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. hearts. He, he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He, he has filled, filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. The Lord is doing wonderful things. He will do more wonderful things in the coming year and we must bear witness to it and be his instruments that that comes forth. So let's now come together, having our hearts tuned to the Lord's will, to the Lord's forgiveness and renewal. Let's come together to sing songs of renewal. Let us sing.
to a time of thanksgiving, where we bring before the Lord an offering, our hearts, our love, our want to know him more, to hear that story again. And as a community, we also give our monetary, physical time and offerings. Do know that Emmanuel still pulls its resources as an offering to the Lord, to thank the Lord, praise the Lord, and to do his work. You can come to the church, and we have some boxes where you can put your offering money in. And you can say a prayer that it may do the Lord's will and wonder. But also, we are a tech-savvy church. You can give through an e-transfer. So please go to the church website and learn how you can give through an e-transfer to help us continue to share the news about God, about the Christmas story, the Easter story, the story of the church, the message and gospel of Christ Jesus. So please do that. And now let's come together for a prayer of thanksgiving. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Holy God, there's far too much to say thank you. There's too many things going on. Do we give thanks, O oh Lord, for the gifts that we received on Christmas, for the family and friends that we were able to spend it with, for those we heard from through the power of instant messaging? Lord, to give thanks that we have food, a roof over our head. Lord, to know that, at least here in Richmond, we're not snowed in. There's much to give thanks, Lord. But the greatest thing which we join in humanity, everyone, high and lowly to give thanks for, is the gift of Jesus Christ, God in flesh, showing us that God is not far, that God is not a God who simply watches us as we tear ourselves apart, but jumps into the mud, wanting to save us, cleanse us, and bring us to a new land, a 
new hope, a new joy. Oh Lord, that is the greatest thing to give thanks for. And we pray that others can have something to give thanks for as well, that they would hear that story and give thanks, but also that your love would build up and explode within us so that those who don't have friends or family would have friends and family. Those who don't have food or a roof would have food and a roof because you are moving through us because you have put Christ Jesus in our heart. Oh Lord, we pray that you return. We thank you for that promise that you will return and transform all of creation into a new creation, into a creation of eternal life. Thank you for what you have done, O Lord, for the promises fulfilled, and thank you for the promises yet to be. May we, O Lord, be a promise to others of life and love. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. And now we come to our community portion of the bulletin, a time where we remember that we are a community, that yes, we're online, we're looking at a TV screen or a computer screen, but we are still connected, that we are still in fellowship. So I ask you, look around the room, look around the 3D space that you are in. See your parents, your siblings, your kids, anyone who's there in the room, your friends, your roommates, and wish them the peace of Christ and a Merry Christmas. We are in the season of Christmas. And when you've done that with everyone in the physical space, then go to your phone, go to your email, shout across the street, and wish someone the peace of Christ and a Merry Christmas. So let's take time now to pass the peace of Christ and wish people a Merry Christmas. Peace of Christ and Merry Christmas. Peace of Christ. And now with that all passed around, we come to announcements. Things to remember with the year ending, things are still going to be in the new year, things that we still have. I want you to know that we have a online um, Sunday uh, English prayer meeting, that we still come together to have prayer together, to pray for each other, for the community, and the life of the world. And with 2021 coming, we need to pray together. We pray at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you are interested in joining, please contact me or Hector, and we'll get you connected to our group chat. So please, be aware of our Sunday morning English prayer meeting. Um, I also want to know, for our youth, our 12 and up, uh, there is a youth Bible class Sunday mornings. Uh, oh, that's at 10 a.m. The English prayer meeting is at 10.30 a.m. But the uh, youth Bible class is at 10 a.m. I lead it, and we have Bible studies, we have a time of prayer, sometimes we have games. Um, so if you're interested, please come and join. Please contact me, email me, and I'll give you the Google Meet link so that you can join us Sunday mornings. I try to make it a great time, but I need your guys' help to do that. And now with that, we come to a time of a message. A time, the last message of the year. And I'm the one doing it today, and I, have a, I feel a great honor in doing that because I want to leave you guys with a feeling of hope and encouragement for the coming year. So let's first hear the encouragement, the wonder and mystery in today's reading. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. It's the opening epilogue of John chapter 1. So please hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light that came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. 
but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the side of the Father. He has made God, made him known. Please join me in an opening prayer to center our hearts. Please pray. O God of wonder and mystery, O God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, O God, who is one, God, who is infinite, God, who is intimate, O God, who we can't even comprehend and yet loves us so, may we understand the deeper, wonderful message of Christmas, that deeper, wonderful love in that moment and time, which stretches on to the cross and the empty tomb, to this day full of saints, and love, and hope, and wonder. O oh Lord, you are full of wonder and mystery. And may the words of my mouth, meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our foundation. May we seek you, come to know you more, and love you ever more passionately. May this carry us through the new year. In the name of Jesus Christ, the newborn King, we pray. Amen. So, it is the Christmas season, the Christmas season. Christ is born and Christ will come again. We have traveled through the season of Advent to the season of Christmas. And I repeat that, the season of Christmas. Because I know a lot of people, Christmas is a day, then Boxing Day, they do some shopping, and then they feel kind of sad because now Christmas is over. But no, Christmas is not over. We went through a season of Advent, and now we're in the season of Christmas, which though it's shorter than most seasons, it's about 12 days until Epiphany. And I want to make sure you guys don't let go of that spirit and feeling of Advent and Christmas, especially those virtues. We need to remember hope, peace, joy, and love as we walk in our faith, especially into the new year, especially with those new uncertainties that we are facing. We have to not allow those things to toss us about and be unprepared. We need to carry those virtues into the new year. And so today's message, I hope, gives you that hope to carry those virtues, especially the love of Christ and the presence of Christ. Because if we have those things, we can see 2021 be about rebuilding what 2020 had cracked. We could see new things blooming, or as we see in today's reading from John, that we can see a light shine in the darkness, a light that cannot be overcome, or as one of my favorite phrases, a light that burns away the darkness. In John, we find a God who loves humanity, but he doesn't just love humanity a little bit. He loves because he is love, an infinite love. And so he will go to any extreme to show us and to know it, that he loves us, that he wants us to be with him, to be united in relationship. We believe in one God. And so to say that Christ is God in flesh is actually a very radical thing for many people. That was a radical notion, that Jesus is that one God in human flesh. But God's love is a radical love, and he's going to do radical things for us to bear witness to it. But the radical part, or at least one of the things I think that's, especially for the ancient world, that was really radical, because, I mean, ask a Hindu, God becoming flesh is actually a 
normal thing. It's happened almost nine times for one of them. And for many of the Greeks, the gods' children being also human was also a norm. But one of the radical things we see in Luke is about the way Christ is born and what level he comes to us. That God became a lowly, humble human, similar to us everyday people. Not a prince, not a king, not someone of great power and influence who can, boom, do great things the moment he becomes the legitimate, legal, political king. No. What do I mean? Well, let's look at the passage about Jesus being born. Do you notice something? It says, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Do you notice it? Do you see that little thing? How is Jesus born? It just says he's born, just born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger. It's a very mundane scene, and the thing is, there are probably other babies throughout the world at that time who were also put on stray, uh, um, uh, straw or hay. Jesus' birth, at least in that half a verse, isn't that fantastical? Isn't that fire and lightning and power? He's just born. Jesus is born in such a mundane, normal way, but that actually speaks something very powerful about God something very loving about God. Especially if you contemplate on just how normal that half a verse is. In other faiths, the gods, the prophets, the heroes, when they have a birth story, there's a lot of fanfare, there's a lot of m magic and wonder and lightning and people right there at the birth of the baby. Like, not just coming afterwards, but like there. And usually the baby is known for doing some wonderful things the moment they're born. In, um, to give an example, one of the cases which, for those who really want to say Christianity is just a copycat of other religions, there's conspiracy theorists about the uh, wine god Dionysus who want to say that Jesus is just a carbon copy of him. If you actually do the research, you find that's not really true. Dionysus was actually born of, at least in the popular Greek myths, he's born of a woman and of Zeus. And some people claim virgin. That actually only happens after the church has become quite established, which shows that Jesus' story was beginning to affect the other religions around the world. The only thing that's really fantastical about Dionysus is the fact that he's born in a very unique way, a very unconventional way. He actually does have a habit of dying and rising, but one of the first cases of him dying and rising is that he's actually born from a thigh. In the Greek popular mythology of Dionysus, he is born from Zeus's thigh. Yes, his mother is human, but the wife of Zeus, she. She doesn't like it when Zeus is unfaithful. And so, when he learns that this woman is pregnant with his child, decides to see an end to her. And so, tricks her to ask Zeus to reveal his true form and glory, his divine figure, which, even in the Bible, it says, we can't see God or we will die. I mean, it's even dangerous to look at the backside of God. But she asks Zeus to do that, and then she's evaporated, turned into dust. She's gone. But the baby, unborn, survives, and so Zeus puts the baby into his thigh. And then later on, the baby is born fully divine because he's born from a god, not a woman. This is Dionysus. He is born in a very fantastical, amazing way. And for the Greeks, they were expecting that gods should be born 
with almost this fanfare that the first action they do proves how great they are. They don't start crying and sleeping and pooping like a human. They do something amazing. And this is how the ancient world thought a lot, even within a more modern day religion, Buddhism. Of course, in Buddhism, depending if you're one tradition or the other, Buddha is either a expected divine figure or he was a human that just figured out the truth. But most of the stories still say that his birth had a lot of things happening, showing that he would be the one. There is the story that his mother had a dream of a white elephant entering her side, and then she's pregnant. She's a queen. And yes, once again, a lot of more conspiracy theories want to say, like, see, Buddha was born of a virgin. The stories never said she's a virgin. Just a white elephant popped up. But she is pregnant, and there are holy men who are prophesying that he will either be king of the world or the world's greatest religious figure. That the gods are trying to protect the mother. That they are guiding her, protecting her, and that they are there to welcome the child when he's born. And when the child is born, he's born in a very fantastical way, Siddhartha, the Buddha. He is born with the gods being present and when he's being born, his mother is painless. It's not painful. And he comes out not crying. He comes out looking like a little man, taking steps with lotus flowers, popping up with every step. And usually with the pictures, there's always light and glory everywhere around. And once again, she's a queen. She's rich. For the ancient world, heroes and gods, they are meant to be born fantastically, to show that, oh, this is an important figure, that they're going to do great things. That's why you should listen to them, because they were born in such a great way. But with the birth of Jesus, the actual birth of Jesus, it's just half a line. She gave birth to her firstborn son and laid him in a manger. And so I ask you, Jesus' birth is very ordinary, very overlooked. Think about that. What does that say about God? What does that say about God? That we don't get fantastical wonders about Jesus' actual birth. It's before and after where all that wonderful stuff happens, and it's not even directed towards Jesus. It's telling people that he's going to be important. Mary and Joseph are visited by angels saying that this child is important. Please take care. Be careful with your tummy. Please protect him. Keep him safe. And then afterwards, when Jesus is born, shepherds get a choir of angels being sung songs about how great God's promises are, and this child is the Savior. They sing glory, and then the shepherds go to baby Jesus. Jesus doesn't get the choirs of angels. He gets the shepherds, the everyday poor people. Afterwards, there are prophets who say, this child is great when they go to the temple. The message that they speak is more for Israel and the world that this child is going to do wonders for them. It's not so much trying to heap up praise and greatness on this child because it's just the child, but this child is God's promise fulfilled for us, for Israel. What does this say about Jesus, about God? That he was born as a helpless human baby, not looking like a little man, not a pure divine being who now can't die from the goddess Hera, but just a baby who could be killed by Herod if they weren't warned to leave. What does this say? Religious birth stories have a message and a meaning behind them. They try to tell us something about God. What does this tell us about God? Half a verse, Monday entry. God is not here to say about his reputation, to puff up his glory, but he is here to give us something. He is a gift to us to share in our loneliness and humanness. God comes in a human way, dwelling in human flesh, living as a human, and it is humans who receive the wonders of heaven's songs. God's birth isn't fantastical to himself. 
because God is born for us, for our rebirth, for our resurrection. The story is not a gift about God's greatness, but a gift of God's love to us, God's love for us. Of how far he's willing to go. In the writings of John, you'll see this habit, especially in the letters of John, of the three L's of life, light, and love. That these are things of God, that they are God, and you experience God in them. They are themes that repeat over and over and over God is love, God is light, God is God of the living. And it's God's love, that humble love, that God wants us to be choirs to sing about, to share about. So I want you guys to keep in mind with 2021, to keep in mind that idea of what God wants us to have, why he came as a small, helpless baby in such a mundane way. To keep in mind as we enter 2022, uh, 2021, to have hope and encouragement that God loves you, that he came for you. And he loves you in a radical way. I uh, recently watched a video from The Economist, their magazine, but they also now have a YouTube channel, and they released one about what they see happening in 2021. They see things uh, like the electric car being on the rise, that there'll be even more electric cars on the road, that climate fight is going to be a big thing. Yes, there is COVID. We hope the vaccine will actually end it, but we still have climate problems. We still have pollution problems. And of course, there is a struggle between East and West that if unchecked could just bring turmoil to everyone. But also the video talks about how there's so much uncertainty since it's not for sure that quarantine's going to end by summer. That's what we'd like to see happen if everybody can take the vaccine, keep social distancing. But that's not for sure, especially with some people fearing a mutation that just ruins it. And of course, being as Canadian, the U.S. is still going to be the U.S. We don't know what they plan to do. And as for me as a teacher, Teenagers are still going to be teenagers. They are always unpredictable. And so 2020, uh, 2021 is going to have bumps. It's going to have uncertainty. There's things that we don't know, and that's scary. There will be things that scare us, that will be at odds with us. There will be things that are going to tear down our safety walls and ask us to interact with the world to help it. And then others who will ignore our fear. But ICRC, don't let all that uncertainty, all those things, all the events that could or will happen, don't let them distract you from God's love for you. Don't forget that. God is the source of life, and he burns away darkness. But if we allow ourselves to become blinded, forgetting that he loves us and that he wants to save the world, we will lose hope. Remember that God loves us and that he would empty himself, become human for us to experience what we experience. He knows what we go through. God doesn't need to do this. He wants to do it. He desires it. He loves us, of course. He wants to save us, teach us, love us, and also transform us. Christ has come to make us more in the image of God. The act of love that God has done is found here in Christmas, leading up to the cross and the empty tomb. All of that is love. I'm going to keep saying that word. And also Christ wants us to share that message so that instead of a virus infecting people, it's God's love that's infecting people everywhere. If we forget his love, we can't infect people with his love. And that's the kind of infection we need for 2021. Not hatred, not fear, not ignorance, not the virus, but agape. Agape. You know the word. Agape. That willingness to empty oneself out. 
to love others and give them what they need is a message. That is the message. That is the gospel that can be passed around from person to person, reaching the heart, causing it to grow three sizes bigger from a Grinch to a saint. The act of Christmas. Yes, it was mundane and overlooked by the powers of Rome and Jerusalem, but to lowly people it was hope because God came to them. And so we need to share that story in the coming new year. We can't forget that story. And we need to repeat that story. We have to then act out that story. Because God is calling us to do his will, which is to love. Especially to love the sick, the homeless, the poor, the lonely, the outcast. But also our enemies, strangers, neighbors. With those who we disagree with, we are still called to love them. And love them like Christ. Not emotion, action, self-emptying. And we must tell the story of God's love to others. We have to still say it. We still have to tell it. We have to preach it. We have to have Gospel Sundays, Gospel Saturdays, Fridays, Wednesdays. (laughs) But also that we have to make sure that we are loving people with our hands. Because if we say the story about God's love, but we're loveless, no one's going to hear us. Agape. But also we need to be aware, and this is going to help you throughout the year, to seek God's love in those mundane times. Because yes, there will be troubles in 2021, but there will also be times where things get boring, things get quiet, the taxes get paid, the kids go to school. Life hopefully does go back to just being quiet, but eventually that does also get numb. Also seek God's love in those mundane moments of the day. Because his love is there like a small whisper. He came in a mundane way. And he will come again in a mundane way if you just notice. People of God. People of God. ICRC. Go out into the new year being aware of God's love found in that mundaneness. And in the life of Christ, don't forget it. But let it fuel you for the coming year, grounding you, guiding you, encouraging you, challenging you. Please get challenged. And we will be together in this room, in the sanctuary here. There will be a day when we're back together where we can hug each other, give high fives, laugh without a mask around us. There will be a day that will happen where we have laughters and tears. But if we want that day to come, especially to make it feel genuine, we need to make sure that God's love is our foundation. If it's our foundation, then it will be so. And now I feel like I'm going to repeat, repeat, repeat. So before I end everything, um, before Christmas came, I came across this little quote that I just felt like it resonated and gave me the hope for what Christmas really means, what God's life really means for us actively. It comes out of a book called The Mood of Christmas and Other Celebrations from Howard Thurman. And it's about the symbol of Christmas, the symbol of Christmas, which is a thing that speaks about something even louder. Here's the quote. The symbol of Christmas, what is it? It is a rainbow arched over the roof of the sky when the clouds are heavy with foreboding. It is the cry of life of a newborn babe when, forced from its mother's nest, it claims its right to live. It is the brooding presence of the eternal spirit, making crooked paths straight, rough places smooth, teared eyes refreshed, dead hopes stirred with newness of life. It is the promise of tomorrow, at the close at the close of every day, the movement of life in the defiance of death, and the assurance that love is sturdier than hate, that right is more confident than wrong, that good is more permanent than evil. There's so much in the birth of Christ. My sermon doesn't even give you a percent. This doesn't even give you a percent. So please, for the Christmas season, contemplate his birth. 
God in Christ says to us that life is important, that God loves and will overcome evil to save life. And we should take notice of it. Take notice of life. See God's love in it. Christmas is hope in the dark winter, or the rainy winter for us Vancouver. But it is also known that light shines. God came in a humble babe out of love for us. He died for us and rose to show us life is God's way. Let that light now shine in your new year and share it. Now to the God, the newborn king, the hope of the nations, the God's gift of love, be all glory and honor. Amen. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Now let's come together to sing. Let us sing together. Whether you're at home or in the chapel, we can all stand together at this time and receive the blessings from above. May the Lord of Christmas, Jesus, the Son of God, be with you always and guard you. May God the Father, who loves us, who's always with us, be with you and protect you all the time. And may the Holy Spirit, who resides in you and I, open our eyes that we may see God in the mundane and thereby be blessed. The benediction today is pronounced in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
please do spend some moments in quiet meditation. 